So the optionality and mutation of this company is this number 40. It's 40 industries. They are supporting 40 industries already. Okay. So this breeds tons of different revenue streams, different usage, different models and partnerships with different products. And the Palantir that we know of today is not going to be the same Palantir that we know in 10 years from now. In fact, it's not even the same Palantir we knew 10 years ago. So we're going to talk about when we look at deep dives, when we look at companies, does a company have optionality? Is it able to mutate into something bigger, better, and grander than what you could even think about? Instead of just looking at what analysts are looking at for a 90-day forecast or a year, we're trying to think about how is our world changing? What companies are changing the world we live in and envisioning a new future and creating legs of revenue that you never even thought they could do? Customer value and advantages. So a couple of different quotes here. Um, I really like this one here around the moats or the competitive advantages with Palantir. Said another way, Foundry and Gotham, their two main software products, allow customers to build their own process and power mode. If you're a Fortune 100 company using Palantir, your lead over competitors widen as your supply chains achieve resonance, inefficiencies are trimmed, and the product roadmap slope goes vertical. Palantir software allows customers to look into the very same stone it was named for. It was actually named for the Palantiri or the circular stones that were in Lord of the Rings uh, that you could see through anything uh, at what was going on at that time. And Palantir recognized this moat, which is why they're investing aggressively in early data companies. We'll talk about this in the deep dive, how they're they're investing in other SPAC companies and other futuristic companies that they believe are going to change the world, enabled and powered by their software. So they might take share in rapidly growing businesses that defend their moat. So additional optionality, additional revenue streams like we were just talking about. And an energy super major uh, company, not named, which I understand that. When you think about why would a company want to be named that they use Palantir so then their competitors can also sign a contract. This is the competitive advantage that sets them apart in their industry. And so they say here, deploy their ERP suite in hours. So probably it was Foundry. And within two weeks, they generated 57 million of cash savings and expect to generate 1 billion on an annual basis of savings. Imagine being that IT director or that CFO who's able to go to the CEO and say, we're going to save $1 billion a year by adopting this technology. Probably get a promotion. So with that, we then look how they view the future and how does Palantir view themselves? So one of the founders, Peter Thiel, uh, Growth is an easy to measure, but durability is not. Once again, I'll say that growth is easy to measure, but durability is not or isn't what he said. If you focus on near term growth above all else, you miss the most important question you should be asking. Will this business still be around a decade from now? And you should be thinking about that if you're a long term investor. If you're not a trader, is your company going to survive? Because we know that a majority of the S&P 500 is no longer from what it was 15 years ago. And as technology emerges and as things change, we'll continue to see trends like that. Peter continues on, numbers alone won't tell you the answer. Instead, you must think critically about the qualitative characteristics of your business. So for me as an investor, I like the idea that he's thinking long-term, he's thinking durability, he's thinking about something bigger and greater than what you could even imagine. That's what I want out of a founder. Oh, by the way, Peter Thiel also co-founded PayPal um, and has been a very successful investor for, for many years previously. So in addition, there are no competitors that have the sweeping data analytic offerings Palantir does. This means customers who are not using Palantir are burdened with licensing fees from dozens of separate companies 
whose software oftentimes doesn't communicate with each other. Look at the list on my screen here, and I'm gonna move my picture out of the way. We can see all of these different types of products that in the federal government space, which is where they started uh, in that space supporting our government, you can see all these different types of products that do data discovery or interactive PDFs or map views. All of this is in their different modules that you can see listed here. And then we can see in the commercial space where they're expanding all of the different products that you see and stocks that you see on the, the uh, S&P 500 and uh, commercial companies that you hear about like Google, Alteryx, Tableau, which is now owned by Salesforce, uh, Databricks, which actually has not gone public yet, I don't think. Uh, neither uh, data IQ, um, but you see that they're able to replace all of these different products and not only just think about it from replacing and not having renewals and, and single products, but think about it in the fact that this is a continuous software solution that is able to update itself and is able to continually get smarter and more effective as you add more users and more use cases and more business units uh, that continues to provide savings, smarter decisions and faster decisions for your business to win and beat your competition. Sounds very compelling. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this content and learned something new about investing. Now, if you did like it, make sure to smash that like button. Help us deliver new content for you. And hit subscribe so this way you don't miss any other episodes of our YouTube channel. You can also listen to our network podcast, Pounding the Table, so you can learn more about stocks and learning how to beat the market. Now, are you ready to jump back in the water and dive in? I know I am. So until next time. <laughs>